Doc with Fourier Synthesis. Here's a program I wrote many, many years ago for it DOS before Windows 3. And we're going to use it to synthesize various periodic waves. Now Fourier's theorem says that we can make, synthesize any periodic wave, that's a wave with a well-defined pitch, a well-defined frequency, by using the harmonics starting with the frequency of the wave we're trying to match. So we go to the square wave synthesis case and the yellow wave is my first harmonic and that's at the frequency or at the wavelength that I want to make my square wave. I use one full cup of that, that means the amplitude is one, and then I'm going to use the amplitude of the third ingredient, third harmonic, so I'm going to skip the second harmonic, you might say the second ingredient is zero, like we're not going to use it. So we go to the third harmonic and we add that in at one-third a cup or one-third compared to the amplitude of the first harmonic. Now that red one is the third harmonic and notice you can check that because it has three crests and three troughs. So you have three pairs, crest, trough, crest, trough, crest, trough. So it does three wiggles in the time frame that the fundamental, the yellow one, does one wiggle. Notice that at one-third the height, this will provide a correction to make the fundamental, when added to the third harmonic, look closer to a square wave. Now I'm not proving to you that it's one-third the height that we get from more advanced math, but watch it in action here. As I add these together, we get a double-peaked wave and that looks closer to a square wave than the first one, the first harmonic by itself. What I'm going to do next is take the fifth harmonic, I skip over the fourth harmonic, I'm not going to use that ingredient. I go to the fifth harmonic and notice that we have five crests and five troughs, so we're looking at five pairs, five wiggles of the red one in the time span that the fundamental does one wiggle. And now the fundamental you see with the third harmonic is that double peak wave, but the frequency is still the same. There's just one wavelength of that that you see across the screen there. And we add to it at one-fifth a cup, the fifth harmonic, and get this. And then we go to the seventh harmonic at one-seventh a cup, the ninth harmonic at one-ninth of a cup. And by doing this with the odd harmonics, you see that we get something that looks more and more like a square and as the odd harmonics are added the wrinkles get ironed out. We're smoothing out those little ripples there getting a better square wave at each addition. Notice that the amounts that we're adding get less and less so by the time we add the 71st harmonic, it's 1 over 71 of a cup. Very, very small amount. But nevertheless, it helps. And we go on and on, smoothing out the wrinkles. And when we get to 99 here, my program stops. Notice that when you keep doing this on to infinity, that you still will have these Batman ears or these rabbit ears that you see there that overshoot a little bit at each edge even though the space between those wiggles will like close shut there and you'll basically have a straight line and you'll have the area matching for the square wave the overshoot will still be there that's called the Gibbs phenomenon. Let's go to the triangle wave and to make a triangle wave, the formula is, or the recipe, is to go with odd harmonics again, but to start with the odd harmonic that is beginning with a valley instead of a mountain. In other words, that red one starts out going down. That's 180 degrees out of phase compared to what we would usually do. So we have, once again, the third harmonic, three mountains and three valleys. It's just that we're starting with a valley. And we're going to use one ninth of a cup or one ninth of the amount compared to the fundamental. So you get that by thinking three times three is nine. That's the formula, which you need more advanced math to derive, which we're not going to do. 
we're going to see it visually here. There you go. And the next one, the fifth harmonic at 125th of a cup, does start out in phase. You see it starts out with a little crest there. And then we go to the seventh one, which starts out at a phase. See, that's interesting with the triangle one. We're flipping the phase here as we go. And we're using the formula 1 over that harmonic square. So 1 over 7 times 1 over 7, say, or 7 times 7, 49, and 1 over that. And here, ninth harmonic, the 11th, 13th, and my program stops there. That's not a band triangle for just adding a few harmonics. Let's go on here to the ramp. Now the ramp formula is to use all the harmonics, even and odd, and the formula is 1 over whatever that harmonic is. So if the harmonic is 2, we add 1 half of a cup in my analogy with cooking. So that red one goes 1 half the height compared to the fundamental. These harmonics that we add on like this help us get better and better approximations. And each harmonic is sometimes called a partial. It's a partial contribution to the sum wave, the wave that you get when you add them all together, the partials. So let's add these two together. They both start out with the mountain, so you would say in phase there, and we get this. And the third harmonic at one third of a cup, starting out the regular way in phase, we get the ramp wave, you see, and it slopes down in this case. The ear doesn't care if it slopes down or up. And the ramp wave consists of all the harmonics where you simply add one over whatever that harmonic is in terms of its contribution. And once again, you smooth out the wrinkles as you add more and more harmonics. Technically, you'd have to go forever to infinity. My program here will stop at 99 harmonics. So here we're about halfway through adding the harmonics, the 100 harmonics or so, and we get better and better. The wrinkles are getting smoothed out as we go. Look at that. A nice ramp. Could you believe you could get straight lines from adding curvy line curves, like the sine waves are curvy, and here we're getting a straight line. That's the power of Fourier's theorem, that it can be done for periodic waves. If we go to the pulse train, the one we're going to do here is made by throwing all the harmonics in, starting out in phase, and having them go at the same amount. So one cup of everything, just throw it in, and what you'll get is a pulse going up and a pulse going down there. And that's one of the pulse trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, discussion of Fourier synthesis, applying the Fourier theorem and seeing it in action.